I am not Tom Byer. Y'all say amen for that one. <laughs> All right. I'm every bit as long-winded as he is, so y'all just deal with it. <laughs> All right. So my, uh, my lesson this morning is about growing in Thanksgiving. And it's not so I thought about it, and I was looking at an old lesson that I did back when we were Zooming. Hey, Brinker Hoffs, that's right. We, we were all Zooming together, and um, I, I figured, you know what? One of the things that we want to do is we want to say, okay, where are our opportunities to grow in thankfulness? Because that's, all, that's what it's all about. I mean, when we read, uh, when we read Philippians 4, 6, 7, it said, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, it, be full of thanks, right? Come on, y'all say, yeah, right. We're supposed to be thankful. But the problem is, and uh, so, and this is why I'm going back, and I'm not even going to call it a problem. Let's call it an opportunity. We have the opportunity to, to, uh, to grow more in thanks, but we've got to take away all those things that are, are worrisome to us. And I'm going to right now take a moment to just address the elephant in the room because this has been a long week right this has been a long week right now there are many people that are overwhelmed with anger anxiety sadness disbelief and it can be relatively difficult to be thankful in these dire in this dire situation that we're all in now you see what i'm talking about is it's the second we're going into the second week of november and the new england patriots are two wins and five losses how in the world all right, so now, we, now we're smiling a little bit, and that's good, because we know that there's some other stuff going on. But we are Christians, and yet we still, and I'm going to use my, I'm gonna use my, my brother's uh, term, chit-chat. We're chit-chat, chit-chat, and, we, and all we're talking about is all the things that's going on in the world that we, while we should be paying attention to it, because we're in the world, not of the world, we have every opportunity to say, hey, how are we gonna how are we gonna talk to how are we gonna talk to somebody about Jesus this week? How are we gonna talk about how are we gonna talk about Jesus today? So we're gonna tackle this thing. We're gonna tackle this this thing about why we're anxious, why we're worried, and from there, how do we reverse this thing and how do we get to a point where we're now back to showing gratitude showing that thanksgiving showing that that gratefulness that we have that you know god intends for us amen all right um so let's talk let's let's dig deep a little bit and let's talk about worry uh, because again you can't there's no way you can go fear anger worry those things you can't outwardly say i'm thankful god but, but on the other hand you say oh i'm so worried this is so terrible this is so bad uh, jesus uh, jesus said in matthew um, and, and i'm going to go to matthew 6 25 through 27 he says therefore i tell you do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor by your body but or what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feeds them and are you not more value of more value than they and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to the span of your life okay so that's the start all right well now we're so we shouldn't be worried but you don't understand we're human yeah that's true we, we, we get caught up in stuff and I, I was reminded and I'm not gonna get deep into the the whole election thing but I remember Claudia was telling me this week oh hey babe she's in, she's on she's zooming with us today Claudia told us um, you know Claudia was telling me the other day because we were talking briefly and then she said hey well you know what 20 years ago, how many people, every, show of hands, how many people remember 20 years ago? Everybody was in front of the news every day watching what was going on with the hanging chads and this thing and that thing, and we were watching Florida. We had no clue, but how much of your life actually changed over the Florida recount? But we were all, grabbed, everything was just, the world stopped over that. And my good brother Gordon would call that nonsense, you know, like everybody's just worried about what's going on here. Because the bottom line is, well, uh, Jesus is our 
government. He, Jesus is our, the leader of our government. We are citizens of a heavenly, uh, of a heavenly government, right? So let's you know, start focusing on, let's start being laser sharp focused on what it is that um, God wants and let's, let's start growing, see? Um, one other thing that Jesus had said uh, in Matthew 6, 34. So we'll move further down. He says, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is sufficient for the day is its own trouble. There's a reason that Jesus did that. Jesus probably, Jesus, no, not probably, Jesus knew that as we became, as we grew and as we grow and as we become followers, we're still going to kind of go off a little bit on our own little, on our own little journey. And we're all going to seem to forget. And we, for, we forget well sometimes because we get ourselves deeply rooted in name calling and uh, just, whoa, these people are so stupid. I can't believe these people don't think the way I do. I can't believe these people call themselves Christians because they, you know, because they follow this guy that believes this and that. We've got to stop that. That's not what that's not what's intended for us. And again, if our if God put us here that we are to worship Him, a in spirit, b in truth, we are also to give we are also to give Him thanks at every at every turn. Can't do it. And 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 if you remember my table talk last week, there were all these things that we had we had to be grateful for that uh, that reconciliation that we have through Christ. It's it's time, folks, that we um, that we reach out to one another and we start changing, changing. Um, so what do we what do how do we replace the worry? What do we replace that worry with? Uh, some folks say, well, what, let's let's do let's replace worry with God's peace. You see, um, uh, worry doesn't have to be a constant struggle if we allow the peace of Christ in our hearts. Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of Christ the rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and, oh, here's the word, be thankful. Wow. So the minute you, the minute you take all that stuff, all that burden off of your heart, now I can say, okay, I can be thankful now. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Man, I'm starting to think that there's a, I'm starting to think that there's a pattern here. <laughs> like with, with one thing, you get the other thing. So without, with all the, you know, taking all the burden, the anxiety, the worry, the anger, the bitterness, and all that good stuff, you can now lay all that stuff at the, at the doorstep, at, at Jesus' doorstep, and say, okay, God, now let, let me tell you how thankful I am, right? Um, So, uh, the Psalm fifty-five twenty-two says that we should cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. That's right, y'all. <laughs> we give give Him our give Him all your burdens, and you're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna be lost. You're not gonna be buried in all the bitterness and all the stuff that's going on now. Um, and Anxiety can be crippling. Anxiety is something that can really put you, can really put us down. But we can replace it with thankful prayers and thoughts, and look to Christ. Look to Christ for peace. I know um, we sang "Sing and Be Happy" this morning at the uh, at uh, at our Bible study, and you know the whole deal is look to Jesus and pray. You know, there are all there are all kinds of people that all have all kinds of stuff going on, and they they seem to get all the good stuff. They seem to have all the, and they aren't really blessings. Good things happen, bad things happen to everybody. The, it it rains on the just as as it rains on the wicked, but anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's, that's from 1 Peter 5, 7. And uh, I'm going go to the, I'm gonna go back to the lesson text, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Um, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. 
And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I wish I could tell you because I, I thought about it, and again, I was putting together, I was, I, I was redoing an outline, and I was telling myself, well, hey, wouldn't it be neat if I could just, I, I can just, like, figure out some new thought about it, and, well, I, I hate to tell you guys, but there's no more new thoughts to give you, because most of us, we come here every week, and we'll sit, uh, we'll sit in here on Wednesday. We'll come here on a Thursday, maybe. We'll sit here Sunday morning. We're sitting here right now in the auditorium during Sunday. And we say, okay, we'll soak in all, the, all these great messages that Tom or, you know, as JoJo's bringing it next week. Me, all, but there's nothing else. There's nothing new for us to tell you. There's nothing new under the sun. We just need to commit ourselves to changing the way we think, the way we behave, the way we love. Because we can't say that, I, how, can, how can we say, oh, I love my neighbor. And, or how can I, we say, I love Jesus, but we can't stand our neighbor or this, the guy who thinks a little differently from the way we, he thinks a little different from me. So I don't really like him. I can't, I can't really put up with what they have to say. Brothers and sisters, it's time to change. All through the book of Acts as we were studying, we were seeing all these different people that just jumped on, the, just jumped on that, that follower of the way, the, the, the bandwagon. And let's, well, we'll call it the bandwagon for just a minute, but that's what we did. We, they just said, okay, wow, this is some awesome stuff. Like, you know, Peter, one of these guys, they gave him all this great stuff. But we know that there were some people that just said, well, I still got my stuff. We, we studied about Simon the sorcerer, and he may have had some ulterior, he definitely had some ulterior motives, but uh, could he have changed that? Maybe, maybe not. But, the, but that's a lesson to us that we definitely are all going to end up reverting back to what, we, you know, to what we know, and we talk about this all the time, what we know, we always end up finding ourselves back to that place. And now is the time to change because with change comes true gratitude and with true gratitude comes real growth. And when we grow, it's going to be tough again because in this, in this time of the, the COVID apocalypse, as we change, as we grow, pew, pews grow. And they grow with people who, who say, wow, you know, Mary Martin Ronald is such a loving person. I want to be like her. I'm going to hang out with her too. I'm going to be where she is. I'm going to be with the Terry Berries and Alan and Mary Thompson. I'm like, Alice, wow, these, these are awesome people. I just want to spend as much time as I can spend because they're so hungry. Not only are they hungry for knowledge, but they're so full of love. And yet, yet, and I'm promising you after, the, after we're done today, one of you will say some kind of thing about all that mess that's going out there right now. Change. That's a, that's a change because, again, we're, we're caught up in the worry of, we're caught up in the worry of the world, and the worry of the world, the world's, the, you know, the, the day will take care of itself. And God, he's going to have the, uh, if you call it the last laugh if you want, but he's going to judge all this. He created all of this. Heavens, the earth, and all that's in it. And when, once we recognize that, man, I'm still ex I'm excited again because I, I was in just total tears. That, you know, I, I don't look at Facebook anymore. I don't really talk to anybody now because all I hear is eh, 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 beep, beep, beep. We've got to change. And when we change, one of two things are going to happen. Those people that are always, the people that are always around you that, that, that have those negative things to say, those awful things that, that they say about other people or the people that just don't quite think the way they do, huh, well, they're probably not going to find themselves around you much more. But guess what? You now have time to focus yourself on finding somebody who's looking for God. Is that a hard thing? I mean, is that a bad thing to do? But we like what's we like what's familiar, don't don't we? So we would rather just be miserable and worried and uh, just full of uh, everything else that's going on, right? Let's change. Let's see what let's see what the other side of this thing is going to look like. Um, 
Don't worry, trust God. Have faith, in, uh, have faith in God's plan for our lives, right? And trust that he has plans to give you hope and a future. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You know this one. Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. That's a hint, y'all. It doesn't matter who's in charge. It doesn't matter who is physically in charge in, in place here. It's still God's. He owns it. He made it. It's his. End of story. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. That's Psalm 112, 7. I'm going to say this again. Have no fear of bad news. Some people can see what went on this week as good news. Others as bad. But it does, again, it doesn't matter because however it works, we trust in him. We trust in God, right? Y'all can answer me. It's all right. Um, trust in the Lord always with all your heart and do not lean on your understanding and all the way in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Oh, how about that? That was the that was the cover. That was the um, hey, that was the bulletin today. Isn't that something? Synchronicity, y'all. Synchronicity. And um, and no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the ways of, es of escape that you may be able to endure it. God's going to hang on to you. He's going to keep you. And he's, he's going to keep on loving you. He's going to keep on loving you even, even when. Y'all remember, even when. So, yeah, we're going to stumble. We're going we're to run the race a little bit and we're going to fall down, but we're going to be okay. All right? Romans 8, 31 says, what, th what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can possibly be against us? I... Um, and again, it wasn't. A, I didn't have a. I didn't have a super long lesson for you this morning, because it's one of those. If you then, it's kind of like back when we took geometry. You had the little proofs that you had to do. If you trust God, then you're going to be okay. You're going to. You're. He's going to. He's going to continue to hang on to you. If you believe that if He's with you, then nobody can be against you. If you do not worry, if you do not fear, if you do not hate your, your, your very neighbor, then you're going to be all right. Because God is going to love you. He's, because he says, how can you say you love me and you don't love your neighbor, which is who is right here next to you, right, right in your face? I want to I want to read a little something from you and um, some of my uh, some of my 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 Zoom my Zoomers here heard me read the, uh, I, I, he, I gave this and all right. So I'd like to think of myself as a growing, maturing Christian. So I'm not going to call the author of this a, a prophet. He is a poet and it is a very prophetic, it is a very prophetic, uh, it is a very prophetic writing. And um, I want you to hear it. Rise up this morning, smiled with the rising sun. Three little birds pitched by my doorstep, singing sweet songs of melodies pure and true, saying, this is my message to you. Y'all know what I'm saying, right? Don't worry about a thing, because every little thing is going to be all right. Yep, that was from Bob Marley. Sometimes, some of the most, some of the most poignant <laughs> Points that we that we need to help make our to help move forward in our lives come from the people that you would very least expect it, because the Bible has been saying for thousands of years, "Don't worry about a thing, because every little thing's going to be all right," and we just now have to 
get ourselves to a point now where we trust God enough that everything is going to be all right. If we're indeed, and the other thing is, if so now we, how do we put, how do I lay these things at, at God's feet? Well, the other piece is, um, you, we can say, I'm going to I'm going to work a little harder at being nicer to people. I'm going to work a little bit hard about being a better a better guy, a better father, a better husband, better wife, better sister. But the other thing is there's a little, little other piece in there and it and most it's called obedience. And to get to, to get to that point where you say, well, am I really? Th- I'm going to show how really thankful I am. Well, then if you're thankful, then guess what you're going to do? You're also going to be obedient. And if you're sitting, if you're sitting there now, and you know, let's say now that you aren't, you aren't where you want to be. If you're sitting right now and you're not, you're not a child of God as. The Bible describes what it takes to be a child, to become a child of God. Then I would simply submit to you six little steps. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. Hebrews eleven six says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 2 Peter 3.9 says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us and and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We must also confess Christ before men. Matthew 10, 32 says, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. And Acts twenty two sixteen 16 says, Now why are you waiting? Arise and be immersed. Arise and be immersed and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, you can't call on God unless you're, unless you're having your sins washed. That's the thing. And finally, we need to be faithful to the end. And Revelation 2.10 says, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Over and over and over again, I, I, sometimes, well, we come in sometimes, and, and sometimes we come in like, uh, like oh, the, the loving guy, and we, we throw, we're throwing feathers, and we walk on eggshells, and we... And well, that's just sometimes that's the way we got to do. Sometimes we got to be gentle. Sorry, y'all. I'm the bull in the china closet. I'm going to say what I need to say, and I'm going to bounce. That's all. Because how much more? Do you, how much? How many more times? How how often do you need someone to get in front of you and beat you over the head and go, hey, 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 stop getting all caught up in what they're doing out there. Hey, let's start being let's start being these Christians that that let's point let's point to Christ. I don't care. Well, it's not as important what man's political aspirations mean to us. It is not important what one party does because the one thing and this is the one thing that makes me grateful and again now we're at a point where there, there are going to be two different ideologies. We're going to move to two different political ideologies. And guess what? My life has not changed. My life is not going to change because I'm going to look to God. But the truth is, we should wake up every morning and as we pray, give thanks that no matter how things work out, well... Things will change. You know, things will go the other way in four years or two years or six years. Things will change again, and that's a good thing. That's what that, that's what it's designed. That's where it's designed to be. So why are we why are we worried, and why do we have these ideas that the world's going to just implode? Or our world's just going to implode because well, a new guy came. A new guy comes into office. It shouldn't be. This is the time now. That we give our. This is the time now that if you have a need, um, and 
by the way, if you are if you are a Christian today and you have something that's that's hurting your heart and you want to bring it to you know you want to bring it to our attention that we may bring you some that we may pray for you, then now be the time to come as together we stand and sing our song of invitation.